Let's bring in Pauly. He's always a good He's guest. Awesome. He's a great good guest. Pauly. Good morning, Pauly. How are you, my man? Good. Here he you is. Guys, you guys keep talking about this this plane thing. Yes. Yeah. And I'm like, I'm looking at your. I'm sitting in the waiting room. Yeah. And I'm looking at all that that hot ass <laughs> that you have in your promo. On I'm the like, Rover Let's talk Fest about the girls, yeah, dude. Yeah, Screw yeah. the plane. <laughs> like, where are those? <laughs> Do you no, get you kidding. fly all over the place? Uh, I mean, you're you're doing comedy shows. You're going all over the country. Do you get nervous when you fly well, like that? Well, just to back up, just really quickly, I was I actually flew to Thailand the same day that that Malaysian plane took off too. Oh yeah, oh. I was flying on Filipino Airlines. For those of the people listening, you probably don't know the difference between what a Filipino and a Malaysian is. So I could have been possibly on that plane. How happy would most of the people have been? <laughs> you know what I mean? People are like, Pauly, didn't Polly Shore go to Thailand? Was he on that Malaysian plane? No. Damn it. So There'd close. Parades. Yeah, people. yeah. People are, people are um, you know what the thing is? What's interesting is that, that the Filipino Airlines um, actually um, is an old airline. Like an actual, like we've all been on American Airlines, you know, or Delta, and you've seen there's different versions. Yeah. There's older version and there's what? The newer right, version. The, the new, newer right. versions. And Filipino Airlines, like I assume it's the same as Malaysian Airlines. They just haven't updated their systems in a long time. So to me, you know, because I thought it was a terrorist thing. Yeah. You know, you know, that they hijacked it and it's like, you know, it's sitting on a... It's sitting on a, uh, a a runway somewhere in Pakistan or something like that. Yeah. But to me, I think it was just an old plane. Yeah. You know what I mean? Think about it. Well, people don't realize I've I've traveled all over the place, and you get on some of these planes, like over there in Asia. Uh, and, and Asia was the worst airlines that I've been on, uh, and I think it even gets worse from there. Like Russia has the the worst of the worst, I think. But. You get in there, and it's it's like you've stepped into a time machine. Yeah, <laughs> it's, it's pretty old. It's like they could make a movie. Polly could star in it. It'd be like Airplane Time Machine or something like that. Um, and, yeah, the, the so, decor is, yeah. like, from the 70s and stuff. Yeah. It's uh, The colors and, are all orange and everything. Yeah, and the thing that's a little scary to me is every— So did they they, they found that there's parts of the plane in the in the Indian Sea, is that correct? No, they've, they've now, as of a few hours ago, they said, oh, all that stuff we've been seeing on satellite that we thought was— Oh, uh, it's not it. Yeah, it's not, and we're moving about— 800 miles north. Now that's where we think the the plane but, could be. But now. did they think that it, it has been hijacked or they think it's gone into the water and everyone's dead? I think they think it's in the water is right. what they're saying, yeah. Because they were they had that one thing that that, you know, and and this is what I thought was that it was hijacked and it was taken to a landing strip somewhere in Pakistan or something like that and they basically killed everyone and then they they um put a whole bunch of explosives on the plane mm -hmm. and they wrote American Airlines or Delta Airlines on the side of Malaysian so then they oh. took that plane they were going to take that plane into like a Justin Bieber concert <laughs> or something you know something where there's a big stadium or a sporting so event so more parades yeah. once he's killed every, everyone's <laughs> happy again are they happier Pauly Shore's dead or Justin Bieber uh. so um so uh so that but but putting that out there isn't a good idea because then that just gives terrorists other ideas yeah you know what i mean people are thinking oh man maybe like that's that's actually a great idea do you for believe in conspiracy theories like like that guy, oh, our government's in on it, trying that to keep That was actually us out of a pretty good analogy. That guy, that guy said that that you know people are trying to cover it up. I don't know, um, but I think, like you said, I mean, I don't, I'm not, you know, I'm not the executives at CNN, so I don't really know. Are the ratings really well right now? I'm surprised. Yeah, oh, they're huge, really? absolutely huge. Yeah, I mean, they've called every expert. I'm surprised they haven't called you to come on right. and comment about this because they really. I mean, you 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 just have to have a modicum. If you flew on an airplane before, they'll get you on as as an expert <laughs> that can talk about it. And then what I hate about it is that they have this whole panel of experts, and they they have like ten of them all up there on the screen at once, and they let each guy talk for fifteen seconds, mm. and that's it. There's no. You can never delve into any yeah. detail uh, about it. That's what sucks about yeah. TV. But that's why radio, I think, is great. And you are actually doing a podcast, or st I think you're gonna start a podcast. I, or? Uh, well, I, what I did is I started I started recording a whole bunch of interviews. Mm -hmm. So I've been banking it. So it hasn't it hasn't come out yet. So I'm just editing it and putting it together. Basically, the structure is, for instance, let's talk about Arsenio Hall since he's from here. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, so I interview Arsenio. And then I get Paul Rodriguez to comment on the interview. So that's pretty much the structure. And because Arsenio and Paul Rodriguez kind of, you know, comedian Paul Rodriguez started around the same time. 
So they both have stuff that's you know that's uh, similar. So, stories may overlap, yeah. or they may have different perspectives on, yeah, on so parts that's, of stories. Yeah, and so like that's that. the structure, and it's called Polisher's Interested, and it'll be out probably. I don't know. I'm just I've got over about 20 interviews in the can, so I've been just doing host wraps. Yeah, all the interviews are done, and now I'm just doing the host wraps. But isn't that great that you don't have to? It's not like television where you you have to, you have uh, six minutes. You have to f- cram everything into six mm. minutes. You could sit there and record something. You could record for two or three hours if you wanted, and yeah. then take w- whatever you want out of it. And there's yeah. there's really no restrictions. You can, yeah, you can edit it and you put music to it and stuff. I want to make each one like a like a show though. I don't want it to be just like because you hear these long interviews on these podcasts, and I'm not saying that they're not great interviews, yeah. but I want to do something that was different and and not so um, long and drawn out. Yeah. And, quick and so um but i've gotten some great interviews really good ones like i got uh joan dangerfield the widow of rodney dangerfield yeah who was a lot of people don't know that she was with rodney dangerfield for over 25 years so she was with him the whole time Mm -hmm. back to school all this stuff so she's the one that owns all of rodney's you know uh, likeness and no owns was there and then i had andrew dice clay um talk on that particular one which was cool because rodney gave andrew dice clay his break from the young comedian special Mm -hmm. so it's a real insight of that kind of time in the comedy world in the 80s which i thought was just a really cool interview now so what motivated you to do the podcast just to get it out are you going to try and make money on this or what's no i just everyone's everyone's doing it and and you know it's kind of like you got to go where the cheese is yeah you know in the business you have to go with what people are doing and try to stay current so I, i don't like to do things unless i'm really really excited about something um so i just started doing these interviews because I was interested in a lot of these people that I was talking to. And then after that, I came up with the structure. And um, I don't know. I'm pretty excited about it. I think once people hear it, they'll be like, whoa, these are these are really dope. You got to hear these. And when did you say these are going to come out, start coming out? Um, this year for sure. Okay. This year for sure. I'll be finished, finished in April, like with all the editing, stuff like that. But I want to bring it out with my documentary. So when my documentary comes out, I want it to all kind of be the documentary, the podcast, all that stuff at the same time. Yeah, let's talk about that. Pauly Shore, and by the way, Pauly Shore is going to be at the Improv tonight and tomorrow night at 7.30. uh, tomorrow night, uh, the 7.30 show is sold out. Uh, so tonight and tomorrow night, 7.30 and 10.15. And, and then Sunday, Sunday night, too, yeah. Sunday, Sunday night, yeah. 7 o'clock. And uh, uh, the number to uh, purchase tickets, I'll give you that in uh, just a second. But he's going to be at the Improv over there on, on the West Bank of the Flats. Um, so let me let me talk to you about that. You are f- you filmed the documentary? It's is this fi- in yeah, the can? it's finished. And this it's is finished, finished. about what? It's basically, um, it's got the tone of kind of searching for Sugarman. Do you ever see that documentary? I, I didn't, but I heard it was great. Yeah, I think it was even Oscar nominated, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's, it's basically the camera finds me on this um, kind of snowy Midwestern tour. I'm playing all these kind of sea markets like Antigo, Wisconsin, you know, Wausau, <laughs> Wisconsin. I'm performing in places that have never done stand up. Yeah. So that to me is just interesting itself. I mean, like, playing venues that are attached to bowling alleys and just like really, <laughs> but real America, not improv. Improv's yeah. like really nice. Yeah. You know, these are like the real, you know, sea level markets. So I'm on the snowy Midwestern tour and by myself performing, making a living while I'm dealing with moving my mom um, out of her house of 40 years. You know, my mom's not just my mom, but the mom of all the comedians from the comedy store, Mitzi Shore, yeah. who, um, I mean, she's got Parkinson's and just, you know, all the, the uh, the stress that goes with that, and then dealing with my siblings and I don't not talking and and just being by myself in this kind of part of my life, um, and that's kind of what the documentary is. It, but it's really funny and it's very heartfelt and it's very real. See, and it's now like, you say you that know, this is going to be funny. This it, sounds it, very depressing to me. Well, I pitched it that way, <laughs> but it's not. It's 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 funny. It's. You know, um, my friend of mine saw it and he says, that's really cool how you balance like, you know, the heart and the real and the funny. And it's got all the different kind of, it's got all the different um, things that, you know, exist. So, I mean, the comedy comes from just me being on the road. Yeah. The last, the last time you were here, which I guess Rob, my producer said was in the fall, uh, it was a very difficult time for you. I know there there was a lot going on at that point with your mother and uh, your s- been, yeah. siblings yeah, and yeah, yeah. lawsuits. I don't know if there was actually lawsuits or or not, but 
I mean, has, yeah, has anything calmed down a little bit since then? Not really. Not really. No. It I hasn't. mean, it's still, you know, it's still, um, it's just when, when anyone out there listening who has a parent or a grandparent that's dying of some type of slow death, illness, Parkinson's, Alzheimer's, cancer, they can relate to this because what it does is it brings an added extra stress to all the, the sisters, the brothers, and the family. Yeah. Some Sometimes what it does is it brings the families closer, and sometimes it does what, what has happened in my family, which has kind of broken them apart. And is it all— And that's just, you know, and that's just—you can't— if you, if you had people call in right now, they would probably— some people would be like, oh, yeah, me and my family, we get along great. Or, oh, you know, me and my family, you know, we're fighting. So it's just, to me, it's like— it's a select group of people out there that are going to really relate to this film. Well, you know what I mean. In, in your situation, you said people, you know, are going through the same thing, but it's compounded in your situation mm. because there's a a pretty large estate involved, yeah. money, and yeah. that 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 makes people do things that they may not. You know, if your mother had no money, mm. I'll bet you there wouldn't be any fighting with it's you. It's funny and the because you say that. There's a lot of people that say like, I went through that, and my mom just owned a condo, <laughs> and they all fought over a hundred thousand dollar condo. <laughs> yeah. You know what I mean? It's just weird. You know what I mean? And you know, I don't know. Uh, Pauly Shore mm-hmm. is here with us. Um, did you? So like, nothing is. Is, re- that, is that tequila behind you? Yeah, it is. You we want? should do some shots. <laughs> <laughs> this no, is a good time. You know what? I normally I, I would take you up on that offer. Right. However, You're except <laughs> no, no, no. I, I went to bed late last night, and I was I was in bed because you and, knew I was going to be on the show. Yeah, well, I was prepping. Like, oh no, um, yeah, I was sweating. I gotta, I go, oh, Paulie Shore is going to be on. Uh, I woke up at you ever? Does this ever happen to you? Three o'clock in the morning. I'm in a dead sleep, just absolutely dead asleep. I wake up from it instantly, mm. and I go. I'm going to have diarrhea. And I had to jump out of bed. I had explosive diarrhea wow. at 3 o'clock in the morning. What did you have to eat last night? Uh, just a salad. So maybe An old salad. It was four days old. I don't, but there was no dressing yeah. on it. It was, it was dry lettuce. What did you have for lunch? You got to keep backing it up. Yeah, yeah. A lean cuisine. That was That's it. That's probably what it was. I don't know, but yeah, it's explosive diarrhea and and so other the tequila or any sort of alcohol right Not now good. would be yeah yeah you do a shot and that would be the end of the interview I about got, two minutes later. I got woken up because in my hotel room. The person that stayed in there before left my the alarm on at to five a.m. Oh my god! I've had that. that sucks. Yeah, it I've wakes had you that. up. Yeah, that blows. They do that on purpose. I guarantee it. They Just, know. Oh, Polly Shore's coming. Yeah, yeah. Or, <laughs> I'm gonna throw know, him like, off. Yeah, I'm gonna get him up at five a.m. <laughs> you know what I mean? What were you doing in Thailand? You said you were in Thailand. What were you doing over there? Um, I was just going there to vacation. My friend had been, my friend Mark had been going for over fifteen years. Yeah. And every year he's like, "You got to come, you got to come." So I wanted to go there, and it's, it's pretty awesome. It's kind of like Hawaii on steroids. Yeah. Everything is cheaper. Everything is sweeter. The beaches are nicer. The foods better. Everything is, you know. It's great. It's lots it's of awesome. Australian broads over there. There's For no whatever Americans. reason, the Australians yeah. all go to Thailand. I guess it's fairly yeah. close over. And there. if you fly over there from here, you'd probably fly from here to L.A. and then L.A. to Bangkok, and you know it's pretty. Um, I don't know. It was pretty cool just to go over there. I but. I I I did it, and I, that's the route that I take. Yeah, it's a long ass. I mean, it's forever to get over there. When were you here. in Thailand? Uh, just maybe about a year or two yeah. ago. Where yeah. did you go? Did you go to Phuket? Uh, uh, I was in, yeah, we were, we're no. Koh Samui. Koh Samui oh, and Koh Phangan. Yeah, Koh yeah. oh, Phangan. Koh Phangan is where they have this, uh, it's like an island and they do yeah, this that, full moon yeah, festival. That, did you go to that? Oh, 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 oh. Really? It was, abs- it was nuts. Absolutely insane. Jesus. Because it's just 20,000 people out there on this beach wow. and they give you drinks in buckets. Wow. And uh, they just pour all this alcohol into a bucket and then a plastic bucket and then you, that's your one drink for the night. It's so much wow. alcohol. And then you just puke right into that bucket when you're done. I saw wow. uh, hundreds of people puking into this bucket and I asked when I bought it, I said, you guys clean these buckets out? They go, oh, oh yeah. Oh, we clean a bucket. Oh, very oh clean. God. We clean each one. I saw them paying like five-year-old kids to pick up to all these buckets at the end of the night. Then they right. no, they don't scrub them. They just put them right back and start oh serving out of them God. again. I saw that at the end of the night. So, so full moon, it's once a month. Yeah, once a month they do it, and then yeah. I think there's a big. I think there's like a big, a couple times per year. There's a big one if it's a full moon or or not right. a full moon, but if uh, I don't know. There's there's ones that are bigger every. Uh, 
I guess if I guess it's bigger if it happens to fall if the full moon falls on a weekend. Mm. Those are the ones that are big. And did you, who'd you go over there with? Uh, my sound guy sitting. Right so did behind. you guys get some girls? Of course. Uh, what in, do you mean, uh, in Thailand? No, no, no girls. No girls. First of all, you have are to, you married or something? Is your I'm wife not listening? Married. No, no. Is your uh, girlfriend listening? Uh, she is, but she wasn't my girlfriend at the time, so I would tell you. I know, I'm the only guy that can go to Thailand and doesn't get any poon, right? I mean, it's ridiculous. Well, how can you not get poon? It's like $3. I'll tell you how I didn't get uh, uh, poon in Thailand. But, and uh, Pauly Shore is here with they us. They beg to massage you there. In Thailand, yeah. Yeah, they just beg for to rub your feet and beg to, you know what I mean? So, and like the happy ending, they're like, you know, they start flicking your penis. You know what I mean? They're like, do you want this? And sometimes you're like, yeah, and sometimes you're like, no. Well, I'm, It's kind I'm, of like depends on your mood. I'm there with Charlie, who's our audio guy. And if you take a look at him, you'll realize he is vagina repellent. Even in Thailand, <laughs> like, it just girls take one look at him and they go, well, and everybody else it. is like $5. <laughs> Charge me 100 And they just want to stay away yeah. from him. Yeah, pre- pretty much. I mean, it's it's impossible. to. And he's had a girlfriend for five years, so it's just the two of us over there. So it's 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 difficult, you know, He and he won't cheat on this girlfriend. Mm. So what are you going to do when you're over there with a guy like that? You it's know? not cool. Now, did you get a lot of trim over there? Um... I guess. Yeah. Yeah. You have a girlfriend. You know what's now? interesting about about the the Thai, just being over there and like, like I, I don't want to say I get laid over here, but I like I get laid over here in America. Yeah. yeah. But a lot of guys they go to Thailand that that don't get laid in America. So if there's any guys out there, if you think of your life right now that are listening that haven't been getting laid in a long time, and because you're ugly or you're creepy or you're old or you're like undesirable. You know, go to Thailand. Go to Thailand. <laughs> you know what I mean? Look in the mirror right now. If you fit that distinct thing, like you can, you know what I mean? Because over there, the Thai girls, they don't, they also don't like, uh, what is it? They don't um, disrespect you if you're creepy. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like if, like out here, if, if a girl sees a guy, like, oh, that's creepy dude. Like, I don't want to be next to him. But over there, the girls are like, they don't care. They love it. They don't the, care if the you're creepier, creepier the better. <laughs> <laughs> Do you have a girlfriend now or what? Um, yeah, I've been seeing this girl for a little bit. Yeah. How long? Uh, for almost two years, like in in the summer, it'll be two years. Yeah. So that's pretty serious for you, yeah. right? Because you don't norm, or maybe this is just the impression I have of of Pauly Shore that you don't date, you don't get into long term relationships with girls. Yeah, I don't like to get any into any long term relationship with a girl, especially like um, if the girl has a lot of. I don't know. I just think this particular girl, she's just cool. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? She doesn't ask me stuff. She doesn't. She not want she's not money naggy. out of you. She's, she's never not... asking for money. Her whole thing is like, yo, I don't care where we are as long as, long as I'm with you. Yeah. She's not like, oh, you have to take me here. She's never, you know what I mean? She's like, even on a Saturday night, she's not like, let's go out. and She's like, whatever. Yeah. And part of me is like, maybe that's just her ploy to trick me. <laughs> know. You know what I mean? <laughs> maybe she's like, I'm not going to bug them. And I'm not going to give him crap. This will this will keep. I don't know. I've but, been dating um, a girl for it's been about six months now, and I was talking to my agent, and my agent always goes, "Oh, Rover, because my agent will come into town like once a year, and and we'll go out, and here in town, it's you know, chicks will come up to me, try give me the number, you know, I leave a fifty mile radius, no chick will talk to me, but here in town, you can get laid pretty easily. Mm. So my agent will come out, and go, "Oh my God, you should be getting laid all the time. You could have a different girl every night, and." And I go, Bob, that's a lot of work, first of all. Yeah, uh, it is a lot of work. Uh, but uh, so I've been dating this girl for six months, and I, 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 he called me, and he goes, hey, so uh, you, you, you banging anyone? I go, well, I've been seeing this girl for a, f- a few months now, and I was telling him about her. And I go, yeah, it's weird. Like, she cooks and stuff. She comes over on the weekend. She cooks, and she'll even cook me uh, meals that that I can have during the week when she's not there, wow. and blah, blah, blah. And She's tricking you, right? That's exactly what my yeah, agent said. He funny. goes, don't fall for that, dude. That's, <laughs> right, I mean, right. come on. Are you stu- <laughs> don't be stupid. All the girls are listening to this are writing this stuff down. Yeah, so They're do like, you, it's true, you know? Do so. you think that you've been so... Uh, uh, you didn't want to get... But into- also, another thing is is that I'm older now, so I'm, it's almost like I'm kind of w- waving the white flag. Yeah. You know what I mean? I'm kind of like burnt out on the whole thing, so it's like, she's cool... She's mellow, you know, she does, you know, whatever I ask, you know, it's kind of, I don't know. It's Have very... you had your fill of women? I mean, my understanding is that you've just banged countless women. Um, is it true that, that, I mean, have you had your fill basically now that you go, all right, I've had a bunch, now I can settle down with a girl? I don't think it's that. I think it's just your age. I think anyone that gets older just 
just wants to kind of chill out anyways. Yeah. It's just normal. It's just like you don't want to party as much. You don't want to, you don't want to, you know what I mean? Like you guys are sitting here talking about CNN. Yeah. That represents, I don't want to say old, <laughs> but you guys are pretty old if you're watching CNN. I mean, I think younger I'm the people, 20-year-olds, the yeah. they don't yeah. watch CNN. No. I mean, they may watch it a little bit, but they're not like, you know what I mean? Yeah. So my point is, is that when you just get in your 40s or 50s, I don't care who you are. You just kind of like don't want to go out and try to, you just get, you're, your interests kind of change just naturally. I don't know. Do you think that you were so averse to uh, getting in a serious relationship? Because didn't you? Did your mother and father have like a, a, a horrible divorce? If I remember correctly, yeah. yeah. Do you think that had something to do with it? That that you? I mean, I don't know how old you were at the time when that I happened. I think I think them instilling me never to. My mom was always like never settle down, and my dad was always never settle down because it didn't work for them. Yeah. So that was definitely instilled in me. Yeah. For yeah. sure. Yeah. D, uh, how is your mother doing now? Um, I don't know. I mean, it's one of those things that I, I don't know. I mean, I can't say, oh, the last time my mom had Parkinson's, we, it was this is kind of what happened. It, it, Parkinson's is a weird, it's a weird um, disease. And, you know, her insides are strong and her outsides are messed up. Yeah. So um, does she now? Th does she know who I yeah, am? Does she know who you are? I think inside she does, but then it's hard for her to say it. Yeah. You know what I mean? She can't. Yeah. I mean, you basically. But then she gets, but then sometimes her insides will break through her breakthrough, her disease, and then she'll be totally clear. And then she goes back to, you know. Oh my, that, that, that yeah. has to be tough. Oh right? my God. It's yeah. Do you almost, do you feel guilty? Cause I'll bet that to, to some extent you feel as if, oh man, just let her pass. Mm. This is so difficult. Mm. Do you feel guilty to have those thoughts? Cause I, I think it's mm. natural to have that. Yeah, but then I also look at her and, and see that she's not in pain. Like, she's not, like, waking up every morning going, oh, mm -hmm. she's not in pain, but she's a cripp She's crippled. The disease has crippled her. Yeah. So it's a weird thing. It's like if she had AIDS or cancer where they're just, like, you know, in this kind of in pain every day, then, yeah, for sure, like, end it. Yeah. But she's she seems like she just chills. You know, we got her a nice little house. In Beverly Hills, and she's got caregivers, and she eats good, and she takes walks. And TMZ said you sold her old house for five point eight million dollars. Is that correct? Um, yeah, around that. So that's that yeah. sort of gives people an idea of why there's this back and forth between you and your siblings, and I guess yeah. everyone wants a piece of that pie or something. I guess. Is well, that... it's her money, though. Yeah, it's not our money. While yeah. she's alive, all that money goes to her. And and her care is, is probably yeah, expensive, it's, dude. It's it's. I mean, do the math. It's three hundred a day for a caregiver. Yeah. So that's nine thousand a month. Yeah. And then so to to, to her cost of living is probably about almost twenty thousand a month. <sighs> yeah. Do you have to still work? I but mean, you're it's here. Her, you're, it's her money. She she deserves it. You're here it's working, not, yeah, yeah. Uh, and you you go out. You do stand up. Paulie yeah. Shore does. Do you do you have a bunch of money? Do you have to do you have to go out and still work? Do you do it because you love it, or do you do it because you're you financially need the money? Both. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I love stand up. I mean, I'm really excited about this weekend. I just, I mean, I love hopping on a plane and literally flying to a place because I just feel like better energized. Yeah. I feel better. I feel better. Um, it's interesting because there's a lot of people that are, are comedians or rock people and rock bands. They're like, I can't wait to get off the road and go to my home. Yeah. Almost me, all of them. Yeah. yeah. Me, it's the opposite. Really? Yeah. Because it's sadness back in LA. What do you mean by that? Well, oh, with your dying. mother. Yeah. And right, right, Her right, right. legacy, the comedy store, everything, you know, for me, and I'm an emotional guy, so it just I kind of it wears it wears on me. You know what I mean? So yeah. it's it's tiring, and and so yeah, so it's nice for me to be around people. And plus, my fans that come to see me, it's like there's such a genuine love. They all grew up with me um, on MTV, yeah, and MTV, all of that. the sure. movies, all that stuff. So like, there's this genuine love when they come up. So I get the love from my fans. Why don't you do people, this? And, you know? and maybe this is a stupid question. I'm not a, a movie guy. I'm not a Hollywood guy, so I don't know how things work. But one of the things that I love, and I was just talking about this with someone the other day. One of the things that I love is when uh, an actor who you would just would not expect to be in a role, a guy like you, a guy like Pauly Shore, 
I would love to see you, someone give you a role in a movie where you are, I mean, you, you play a serious thing and you're like a drug addict or you're a, uh, you're, you're a killer. Uh, yeah. You're, 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 you're a male prostitute. I don't know. Something. I mean, whatever. Just something I mean, against type. Yeah. Right. Yeah. I mean, do you, I, I, do you, uh, do you want to do any of that? Yeah, of course. I mean, that's, if you, if I had, a, um, if I had a, a choice of the, you know, the top five things that I want to do in my career, that'd be on the top top of my list. But do you think people just won't give you that role because they go, oh, it's Pauly Shore, it's the mm, Weasel? No, I think it just takes that one director or producer to say, shut up, I'm going to do it. Yeah. You know, like they did with Andrew Dice Clay recently with Woody Allen. Mm-hmm. You know, they put him in, was it Blue, Blue Jasmine? Jasmine? Yeah. He was good in that. So I just think, you know, that's pretty much what it is. Yeah, I would love to see that. I think you'd be great in that. And, yeah, uh, the documentary. I think people, if it gets out there, and you know, I mean, I'm, I'm I'm working right now with my agents on distribution. So, if it gets out there, I think people will see that side of me mm-hmm. because it's the first thing that I've done where um, I'm not goofing around. Even though it's really there's there is a lot of funny stuff in it, but I'm not. But it's not purposely funny. You know what I mean? There's no winking. I'm not like winking. Mm-hmm. Um, where, well, it may you know. be the first time that many people will have seen a real human side of Pauly Shore yeah, and not yeah. the, the stoner weasel. You yeah. know, that that's how most people think of you as, you know. So uh, this could I be did great. That, I did that character pretty good. <laughs> uh, I was very convincing. Yeah, very, great actor. <laughs> Academy Award winning actor. Oh, wait. No, that was really. Oh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, Pauly Shore is going to be at the Improv tonight and tomorrow night at 730. Uh, now tomorrow night at seven thirty is sold out, but but they also have a ten fifteen shows tonight and tomorrow night. So seven thirty and ten fifteen tonight and tomorrow night. Uh, Sunday night at seven p.m. Uh, for tickets, call two one six six nine six forty six seventy seven. That's two one six six nine six forty six seventy seven. His website is paulieshore dot com and. Uh, Rob, you have a couple pairs of tickets to give away and for my, Sunday's show. Okay. My, my Twitter, too, at Pauly Shore. At Pauly Shore. Right. Uh, all right, I do have tickets to give away to Pauly Shore. Um, I have a few pair. 1-866-YO-ROVER. That's 1-866-967-6837. Hey, listen, man, it was good seeing you. Yeah, It's may- always good when you maybe come Maybe what we should do is next time, your girl, my girl... Us, we can go to Benihana, <laughs> and we can have a little, you know, family, right? Or your girl can cook for us. That's right. Yeah. You know what I mean? She could prepare. She a wouldn't meal. even have to be there. She could cook it a week in advance and right. just put it in the freezer right. for us. And she can, and we can all prepare. Think are you gonna get married? You gonna do it? I don't know. I don't know. You have thought about Maybe it? Maybe huh? just do it, just to do it, just yeah. to say you did it. Almost yeah. like bungee jumping. Do you have a number of how many women? Do, I mean, if I were to ask you how many, I would women, have to sit down with a. I would have to sit down and break down each year with like a supercomputer like, or something. Well, no, I'd have to sit down and break each break up. <laughs> <laughs> I'd have to break up each year, starting at like nineteen, twenty years old. Yeah, you know what I mean. How, see is how, that many, how old you were the first time you got laid? No, I was like 15. Okay, all right. But I'm talking about, you know, once I start in after high was school. Was that when you got on MTV? How old were you when I you got like on MTV? I was like 22, 23, 24, 25 what was, around there. Is that, were those the highest number? Is that it? That was the, the biggest numbers for those years? It was probably Encino Man, Son-in-Law time. Yeah. So those were your... But it, but it also, like, it was part of my thing. You know what I mean? It was like part of my, you know what I mean? If Kiss's thing was to spit blood... Yeah. Out of their, their, you know, and, and, and Greg Allman's thing is to, like, drink whiskey, you know, whatever. My thing was to, like, hook up with babes. That was what my What a great shtick. thing to have. Like, right. how do that, I turn that, that into my shtick, my shtick right. that I, I'm, you know I, I mean? just bang broads left and right? I mean, yeah. what, what, a, what a genius he is. Yeah, that was that was my <laughs> shtick. So. Critics may make fun of Encino, of man, course, but he's yeah. the real genius. Yeah. He had the last laugh on them. <laughs> yeah. But of course, you, I don't Ebert. have a penis anymore, but that's a whole other, that's <laughs> yeah. a whole, another show, <laughs> and I can't, amputated. you know. That's another documentary, The Amputation of Pauly Shore's <laughs> Penis. Hey, listen, I thank you for coming. Yeah. I wish you, uh, you know, the best with your mother and everything too, and everything that surrounds yeah, all it of is, that. Yeah, it is. It's you know, it's where I'm at in my life right now. You know, when I'm older, I'll look back on this part of my life and be like, "Wow, that was pretty heavy." You know, so, you don't have any kids yourself, do you? Uh-uh. That you know of. Does that bother you? Does that worry you that you see what what you and and your family, I guess, are doing for your mother? Um, 
that you may not have someone to do that for you when if, if that ever happens to you or something like that happens to you when you're older? No, I'll just go to Thailand <laughs> and have some, some $3 Tha- a day. Happy yeah. Thailand, ending all. Yeah. Thailand babes, take care of me. Wheel me around. <laughs> Give me some curry and chicken. I'll be all right. Hey, uh, listen, Paulie, thank you for coming in. Uh, he'll be at the Improv all this weekend. 216-696-4677 for tickets. I have to take a quick for break. Winter, we'll be right Rover? back. Yes. For winter, you want to do 30 and 31? Sure, 30 okay. and 31. 1-866-YO-ROVER. We'll be right back. Hang on. Rover's Morning Glory.